Today we're doing our cheapest build guide yet and we're gonna show you how to put it together step by step. And our friends at AliExpress are nice enough to sponsor this video and showcase some of their awesome products that you can get from AliExpress at great prices to build gaming PCs for as little as $270. AliExpress has a ton of great deals on gaming PC hardware, especially now during their anniversary sale where you can save big. We love their CPU, motherboard, and RAM combos and we'll be featuring one in today's video. We also love their budget GPU selection, especially during an era where budget GPUs are not so budget anymore. AliExpress for budget PC hardware is the better choice at a better price. Not only can you get PC hardware for your build, you can also get setup upgrades like a wide selection of mechanical keyboards, gaming mice, and more. Check the links down below to see some of our favorites along with the PC parts we're using in today's video. The one thing we have to mention and we give a big props to AliExpress for doing this, they sponsored this video but allowed us to pick out everything we wanted for this PC build and some of the stuff in this PC build isn't from AliExpress. We only chose the stuff that we really recommend you buy from there and the rest are available on other retailers. So check those links down below for up-to-date availability and pricing of everything in this video. But once again, shout out to AliExpress for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and talk about each part of this build guide and show you how to put it together. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the AliExpress Special, a CPU motherboard RAM combo. This one is a Huanzai, which we've actually used quite a few times. And this one specifically, the E5 2650 V4, which is a 12 core, 24 thread, which is pretty crazy. And uh, as you can see, it comes a little bit taken apart. We got our RAM in one spot, our IO shield, SATA cable, and the motherboard with the CPU already installed, which we'll show you guys really in depth once we actually get it out to start building it. But yeah, really nice bang for buck on these combos. You really can't do much better unless you're going to like the used marketplace and finding some banger deals. Now, typically these combos do not come with coolers. So what we have right here is an AI Go Ice 200 Pro. It's actually a pretty decent company that we've used quite a bit. It, it is a very cute box. I'm assuming this cooler is gonna be really tiny, but usually these things will always work pretty well for the LGA brackets that we'll need and they typically come with them, but we'll find that out once we open it up. Now for storage, you do have the option to buy these actually on AliExpress or you can buy them on other places, but this is a 512 gig 2.5 inch Vulcan from Team Group and it's an awesome drive. They're actually pretty quick for them being uh, just the standard two and a half inch SATA interface, but it'll definitely do the job and hold plenty of games. Now for the GPU, this right here is a Soyo RX 580 2048. Now we have to do give a big disclaimer when it comes to the RX 580 2048, really any in this generation, driver support just got removed from these graphics cards. That is gonna be the one major downside with this build, but you can opt for something like an RX 5500 or 5500 XT if you wanna spend a little bit more money, but we really tried to keep this build under $300 and you'll see during the benchmarks, this is still a very capable GPU, but within a year or so when major game updates come out or major game releases, this card might not run optimally in those games. But at, for the time being, for a sub $300 build, we think it's a good choice. And to power this build, this is a Zalman Gigamax 80 plus bronze 500 watt power supply. We do recommend a different power supply for this build. This was a substitution last minute because we didn't get the one we actually ordered, but we'll leave those links down below. They are affiliate links and they will help us out to get a 500 watt that's a little bit cheaper than this one. But if you want to splurge and get a really awesome power supply, this one is a good option. 500 watts, 80 plus bronze. We use these a lot of PC bros and they're really awesome for the money. Now for a very cheap build, we had to go with a very cheap case. And we did gamble a little bit with this budget warrior that is incredibly lightweight. Comes with acrylic. I know Jonas just loving the fact that it comes with acrylic. And it costs us a grand total of $39. And it actually comes with two fans, which there's some cases for $50 that only come with one fan. So we get two fans, we get acrylic, we get lighting, I think, and it's micro ATX and should work for this build. Obviously, you could spend a bit more money if you want to, but we're trying to keep this build under $300 using all these parts off the shelf that are not on like Facebook market or other used websites. This is what we're gonna come up with and I think it's gonna work out pretty well. So Jax is gonna show you how to set up the motherboard, which again, it's gonna be very easy. You pop the RAM in, put the cooler on, and boom, the motherboard's ready to go. I'm gonna show you how to install your SSD, your power supply. We're gonna put it all together, plug up all the cables, and get to gaming to see if this combo using some AliExpress deals is worth the money. All right, guys, let's start this thing off and get right into it. So we have our motherboard sitting on top of the motherboard box. Our Xeon's actually already installed. If it doesn't come pre-installed, you basically just push this latch down, lift up the socket opens, you pop your Xeon in, and they actually already installed this too, which is pretty interesting. Matt, did you happen to pre-build this thing? It wasn't me, I swear. Really? This is interesting. Normally this will come separate, but they've already done some of the work for us. So thanks, Wanzai or AliExpress. We'll go ahead and open up our cooler. So yeah, just like a tiny little tower cooler. Does not come with thermal paste pre-applied. And it, act there it is. It actually does come with like a little uh, cheap kind of tube of thermal paste. And it also comes with a bracket and the little plastic clips, but I actually kind of prefer this. They actually use the stock mounting plate with their own bracket, the Twanzai brand, and they screwed it in. So we're gonna use that instead. Uh, we're gonna use some deep cool thermal paste because I don't really feel like using that little weird tube. And these ions are pretty big. They got a lot of surface area. 
So I recommend kind of doing like a good size cross here. I'm gonna put a little over there and a little right here. That's the way that I like to do it. But you can put the thermal paste on however you want. You can wear it if you really want to. These coolers are really easy to put on and they're, they're toolless for the most part. So once you have this bracket installed, you're basically gonna take the fixed side first get it on that center piece. And then this part's a little awkward. It feels like you're gonna break something, but you need to push down really hard and then push some more. Oh, yeah, it takes a lot of manpower, but as you can see, our cooler is on. It looks very crooked. I think the cooler is honestly a little bent, which uh, yeah, that's usually how it goes. These things never show up quite perfect, but I do think it'll keep our Xeon pretty chill. We do need to plug in our CPU fan cable. Plug it in right here. CPU fan, there we go, that's it. And then for the cable, we can kind of take the excess, tuck it. So now that we have the cooler installed, I did notice one thing. I technically put it on backwards. The air is gonna go in this way. It's gonna be fighting the exhaust fan. So we're just actually gonna flip the fan around instead of taking the whole cooler off. So now make sure that the fan blades are facing that way. We call it the pretty side. Have the pretty side facing out. And then just like this. Man, the tolerances on this thing are insane. Okay, that's one side. Ah, there we go. All right, now our fan is facing the right way. It's gonna blow air out the back into the exhaust fan, which will then exhaust the air. All right, now for RAM. Let's see what we got. Two sticks, yep, two sticks, all right. So what we'll do for the RAM is we'll do, let's see, are these slots even labeled? Um, dim three, dim four. So we'll do one and three. So that's gonna be this guy right here. Crunchy. And then this one right here. Yeah, and just to demonstrate again, you're gonna open the brackets, take your RAM, line the notch up, make sure that you're not using your thumbs to push these up because then it's not gonna work. You wanna actually push down on the RAM and get that nice click where they automatically go up on their own. So like I said, slots one and three. Now, one thing that you're gonna often get is these boards that come out of country. They usually cannot ship batteries. So that is what powers the CMOS battery. You normally never have to see us do this, but we're gonna grab a CR2032 battery. There's actually a couple other kinds that will usually work in these, uh, but the, we always have tons of these on hand. Then it just clips in. And now our CMOS will actually remember all of our settings and whatnot, which is pretty important if you change anything. So at this point we have RAM, cooler, CPU, the mounting bracket for it. And uh, we can go ahead and even pre, where normally we'd put an NVMe in here, which this board does have uh, two M.2 slots, but sometimes it's a little bit of a gamble knowing if they're actually gonna work or not. So we like to often just play it safe and just get a SATA cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this in to make Matt's life a little easier because otherwise we're gonna forget it and you can kind of just tuck it behind the board so that when he puts the board in, we'll already have the SATA. But at this point, guys, we got a ready to go motherboard that is ready to put inside the case. All right, guys, now it's time to install the power supply into the case. We're gonna take this case. This is honestly kind of a sad excuse of a case. I'll be perfectly honest with you. But when you're on a budget, you gotta do what you gotta do. And you, once you put this thing on your desk, it's not really gonna matter anyways. So we'll go ahead and take off this acrylic side panel by unscrewing these screws right here, which I would say you can use your fingers on screw it, but they, see what's happening here? The, the thumb screw is de-thumbing at this point for some reason. What did they do in the factory to this thing? Let's see if these other ones will come out. That one's fine. That one's fine. When you're on a budget, you gotta deal with these things. This is why the step-by-step -step build guy is useful for you guys, because you're probably gonna be like, what the heck, why is my case doing that? Well, there it is right there, ladies and gentlemen. We'll, we'll go ahead and take it all the way out and see what happens. I might be able to put it back together, or we might need to get some different thumb screws, or I could use these. It's always good to have extra tools, guys. So go cry to your parents that you need extra tools to build your gaming PC, because stuff like that happened. So we'll go ahead and do a little pinchy pinch. Are you serious? All right, let me just try. There it goes. Okay. Let's go ahead and take that out and uh, we can fix that pretty easily. We'll just push this in a little bit and wow, look at that, we did some repair there. But anyway, so move this off to the side for a second, take off our acrylic panel. We'll need this later, but we'll set it out of the way. Don't worry, it's not glass, it's not gonna shatter. Um, and then uh, I like to keep these screws in the case so you don't lose them. It's a much easier way to uh, manage things. And I'm already telling this is gonna be a fun cable management job because with this cheaper case, we don't have a power supply basement. We only have a little bit of room in the back and the rest is gonna have to just kind of be bunched up if I'm being honest. So that's gonna be fun when we get there. Let's go ahead and remove the back as well. And these are just two power supply screws. 
unscrew and remove. We do have a little bit of a bulge, that'll help us out a little bit, but we'll go and push it out off to the side as well. Same deal, put the screws back in. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, we went the Zalman Gigamax for uh, this build, mainly because the one that we ordered, which was a power spec unit from another website, uh, did not show up or got confused with uh, another one back at PC Pros. Regardless, we're using this one because we wanna get this video filmed today. And it is like $10 more than the other one. So if you're wanting to keep this at 270, not $280 pre-tax, go with a different power supply. But this is a really good power supply uh, that we like. And I think this has not a ton of extra cables. It is non-modular meaning it does come with a bunch of cables that you don't need and the ones you do uh, compared to fully modular which means you have to plug in all the cables that you want individually but um, it's not too bad we'll be able to work with this you also get the power cord in the box which you don't want to lose that powers your pc we also get a little bag in here that has some power supply screws and some uh, zip ties so we can do some cable management we'll need that here in just a second we're going to move this out of the way and we're going to go ahead and undo this pile of cables right here now i know it might be scary you're like, I'm building a PC and all these cables look very intimidating. We're gonna show you how to plug in each one and tell you which ones you don't need. It's gonna be that easy. Okay, so power supply. Well, let's just get a look at this case before we install the power supply. So it looks like this is Molex to power the front fan. Lovely, love to see it. We're gonna go ahead and run that through this hole right here to get that out of the way because there's really not a better option. This right here is all your front panel connectors, which we can go ahead and run through this cutout right here. Put that up there. And then this fan is just a Molex fan, which actually can fit right there. So that works out that way. We're gonna do something extra, guys. Even though this is a cheap bell, we're gonna do the extra stuff. This fan, the cable comes out at the bottom for some reason. It will look a lot better if it comes out from there, just cable management wise. Doesn't really matter with this build, no, but it's just kind of, you know, something we do all the time with all our other builds. We might as well do it with this one. This one deserves the same treatment. Have you ever seen such a tiny fan? No. Little, little baby 90 mil fan. All right guys, so we got the fan flipped. Now we're gonna go ahead and take out this bag of screws right here, which I love that they just pinched it on the PCI cover. So we have to unscrew this screw right here. I'll put it back so we don't lose it, but we'll go ahead and unscrew it so it can come off. And then we'll take our screws out, which we'll go over the screws in a minute. You're gonna need those to install uh, your motherboard and well, other stuff you want to screw like your SSD. We'll go ahead and put this back on though. If you take it off, it slides on like this. And we'll go ahead and screw it back on with the power supply screw. Now we're ready to install our power supply. Now, if you can't tell, the power supply in this goes up top. This is an old standard when it comes to installing power supplies before there were things such as power supply basements because it goes into the attic now. Ha ha ha, so funny. Uh, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grab my power supply and we're gonna go ahead and put it up here, fan side down until all the screw holes line up, which it looks like and, ah, oh, there we go. Okay, it just takes a little bit of force to hold it right here, but we have these four screw holes we need to screw in. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my screwdriver and that little bag that came with our power supply, this one right here, that comes with power supply screws, which we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. There are power supply screws. They have that little head on the top and they are coarse threaded, which makes it easy to screw in stuff that's coarse threaded. So I'm gonna get one in, that'll make things a lot easier. Is that, don't let that hang for too long because that is not very secure. We'll go ahead and get this other one right here. Now that we got the corner screwed in, we're pretty comfortable here to go ahead and do this one. And in the bottom left, we can do this one. So now as you can tell, our power supply is installed and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and get this case ready for the motherboard by installing the IO shield. So the IO shield is the shield for the IO. And the best rule of thumb for installing the IO shield is always have the audio ports, which are these three circles on the bottom. Easiest way to remember it. 99% of the time that'll work. If it happens to not be the case for you, I'm sorry, I was wrong. We'll go ahead and take this, line it up in the back of the case. Sometimes with these cheaper cases, it can be hard, but this actually works way better than other cases. Oh, you said bend, oh yeah. So there you go, push that in on each corner. There you go. So as you can see, we have the IO shield installed. It may be a little bit loose, it's not perfect. This right here also needs to come out. This blocks the ethernet port for some reason. I don't know why that comes out of the factory like that. This is one of those where you can just wiggle it back and forth. Be careful not to cut yourself on that, but a little back and forth, now that's out of the way. Now you have access to all your ports, and now you're ready to install your motherboard. Lower the table for your cameraman. Remove all these power supply cables out the way for right now. And we're going to check and see if we need to add any standoffs or move any standoffs. These right here, our standoffs, these very gold bright standoffs, which very easy to see on a build guide when they're gold. We're gonna go ahead and take our motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and eye this real quick. So go ahead and lay the motherboard in. Make sure the IO lines up. 
And I think we are good, but just for demonstration purposes, because there are people who get upset when we don't do this, we're gonna install two extra standoffs, ladies and gentlemen, because it does come in this bag of screws that we took out of the spot right here. So we have two extra ones, which why don't they install it already? I don't know. Because of these two extra ones, you can install them one of two ways. You can use like these, like little pliers, and you can just go to the standoff that you want to install it in, which the first one we're gonna install is in this one right here. So you can kind of get it started with your fingers and then continue with this. So I'll go ahead and use this for this one, then show you the other method for the other one. Takes a little bit, but you can get that installed nice and secure. Make sure you get this pretty tight because sometimes when you try to remove a motherboard afterwards, you can take this with your screw and um, yeah, it can be kind of hard to get off. Cool, I'm gonna call that installed. Then we're gonna take the other one and go to this one right here. And this one I'll get started. Then I'm gonna grab a little handy dandy tool that you may or may not have. Again, you don't necessarily need it, but basically it goes on to the tip of your Phillips screwdriver and goes over top of the standoff so you can just tighten it down, just like so. And to be safe, I'm going to tighten this one down. There we go, just to make sure it doesn't come out. Now we have all the standoffs installed, we can go and put our motherboard back in. Now we're gonna keep an eye on this SATA cable because again, we wanna run it nice and cleanly. So I'm thinking, we'll see where it ends up going. Actually, we could just run it straight to this cutout here, but we'll do that in just a second. Go ahead and line up again the IO, place it down. And now as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six screws we need to screw in to screw in the motherboard. And we're gonna use that same bag of screws that we had, which come with fine threaded screws. Those are their fine thread. And for comparison, that's a coarse thread power supply screw. Some cases use coarse thread, but this case I believe is fine thread. So we're gonna go ahead and run with fine thread and see if I'm right. So we're gonna take this, start up here, and boom, secure. We'll take the next screw, we'll cross from it, go straight down. Right here. We're going crisscross. And the last one over here. And would you look at that, your motherboard is fully screwed in. Now there is a chance during the cable management portion, we might take out some of those screws to cleanly run them behind the board, but your motherboard is installed. We'll go and raise it up and make sure it looks good. You can go and run this cable through this cutout because this is the SATA that we will be plugging into our SSD. All right, so now we need to install our SSD before we get to plugging everything in. So this case only comes with one normal SSD mount. Now in theory, these things are shock absorbent. You can really just be like SSD installed. You can put it anywhere, you can use adhesive, you can stick it wherever you want. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is use the mounting that it comes with, which is kind of awkwardly on the bottom here. But as you see, when I line up all the screws, you can see down through here, we have four screws that are right there ready to go. Now to install this, you need to use the fine threaded motherboard screws, which you should still have plenty with the uh, kit that you got. Actually, there's four left, so don't lose any of them. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take these uh, motherboard screws and screw in the bottom. Don't over tighten these two. It's very easy to just pull out the threading on these SSDs. So yeah, that's there now. We'll go ahead and show you where the SSD is. I'll go ahead and take this and plug in, which you can do ahead of time. Plug in to the far right here. This is where the SATA goes. This right here is where the power is gonna go with the power supply, which we'll show you in a bit. But we have the SSD installed. We have the motherboard installed. We have all these cables that need to be plugged up. Now we're gonna get to the cable management portion, plugging everything in. And then from there, you should be good to play games on this computer. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how it does. Let's get Jackson in here. All right, guys, it's time to try and plug everything up to this, uh, well, build to get it working. So we're gonna take this monster spaghetti mess of cables and we're going to bunch them up and shove them up through this hole right here. It's kind of hard to see, but we're gonna shove it up through there. That's gonna be the key or the, the main message here throughout this uh, part of the video. It's gonna be hard to see. And honestly, I might have to separate some of this stuff a little bit. Oh, I can, I can pull it through, I think. Pull. Oh, oh yes. God. There's still more. <laughs> modular power supplies. <laughs> yes, modular power supplies. We're safe. <laughs> and there it is. Wow, wow, that was a journey, mm. but we made it, guys. Wow. Oh, and, oh there <laughs> and there goes the case. <laughs> that thing's light. I think it's, is it it's sitting on something? Oh yeah, it's sitting on <laughs> No, it's just that uneven. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that uneven. But hey, all the cables are through there. Now, what are you gonna, what are you gonna feed me first? All right, well, the first thing, I, God, I almost did it again. First wait. thing I went ahead and did was just separated our, our all of our front panel and IO stuff from our power supply. So I'm gonna give you the main power first, the 24 pin, which is 24 pins that powers the motherboard and almost everything else in the build, really. Yep, everything else, there it goes. So I'm just gonna put that right through there. Here's our 24 pin, right her. You don't really get a whole lot of options for where to put stuff. So the thing is, it's 
there's not a lot to plug in, but also, you know, it makes it a little simpler, I guess. All right, so we'll just flip it right here, line it up, click, and then give that back to Jackson, because I don't want it. Click, click, boom. All right, I think we do the CPU power next, which is going to be up top, typically in most boards. Do we need a four pin or an eight pin? I just remember, we do not need to move the power supply because the CPU eight pin is right here. Oh. It's in a weird location. So this right here is a CPU eight, and then this is a four pin. So this is basically like a, an eight plus four pin. So we'll go ahead and feed that. Uh, you said right through here? I uh, you right here. No, right here. It's on the side of the board, which is really weird. So you can see it coming out right here. And we'll go ahead and flip it. do Plug it up, push, and boom. Now these Eon boards tend to have the CPU power in weird locations, but in this one situation, it actually worked out really well. So next thing I'm gonna go ahead and feed, and we're not gonna plug it in yet. This is the PCIe cable that powers your graphics card. Uh, this is called a six plus two pin or just an eight pin. Uh, we're really only gonna need just one here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of preemptively feed it through. It'll make your life a little easier. So there it is, we'll keep it out of the way for now. All right, so now this is kind of just the back area. These are our fans. They're literally Molex only. They're not your standard four pin or three pin fan connector. They're Molex. So That's why we like it. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's simple. It's not pretty, but it, it works. So we're daisy chaining all these Molex together. They can be a little hard to plug in. Sometimes you gotta wiggle them around, but we're gonna go to our power supply cables here. And this power supply in particular has a full Molex run on it. So we're just gonna need one of them, plug it into that end and boom. Just make sure you don't have any pins sticking out the back, but this should be good to go for the fans. So on the top left, we're gonna do the power LED, positive and negative, which is green on the header, by the way. These are green and white, so you get both of those, shout out. And then below that, you're going to do the hard drive LED, positive and negative, which red goes onto orange. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Okay, they're gonna do the reset switch on the blue. That one actually makes sense, blue on blue. And then the red is gonna get the orange for power switch. And just like that, our front panel is plugged in and we can kind of feed this a little bit back through to Jackson. All right, so we have two more things we gotta plug in. We'll do them one at a time though. We have our USB 2.0. This connector right here. And uh, this one is labeled USB. Sometimes they're not. You usually can look at this pin out though. And as you can see, USB 2 will be missing a pin towards the very end of the connector. The only downside with this case is everything has to go through that same spot and reach all the way across the board. Now, right next to the front panel, we're gonna take our USB 2 connector and plug in right here to this front USB header. It should hold on to your case. <laughs> it might fly away. And there you go, USB 2 is installed. All right, last connector. This is the HD audio, which is labeled audio. And as you, if you notice here, it's actually missing a pin, not on the end, unlike USB 2. Now this one's gonna be a little ugly. It's gotta go all the way across and Jackson already fed it through there for us. Push it in and there you go. Right there in the far left is your HD audio and boy does she look pretty. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and power the SSD with this right here. This is a SATA cable or a SATA power connector as I call them. It's kind of like the modern Molex. We're gonna feed that through the same spot that we've put so many things through. And we're gonna take that power connector and again, this isn't the prettiest way to do this, but with this case, budget cases come sacrifices. Ain't nothing pretty about this. We're going to plug it in and boom, we're good to go there. We'll go ahead and tuck some of those cables back, make them Jackson's problem. All right, now at this point, uh, we can go ahead and work on our graphics card installation, which we'll uh, move the camera angles for, but we already got the PCIe cable ran through, if you guys remember, so that'll make it a little easier. Okay guys, we have our Soyo graphics card, as you can see right here. Go ahead and open it up. Again, we do have to mention this is a 580-2048, which uh, just recently lost driver support. But for the time being, when you see the benchmarks, it's gonna run fine. But if you wanna get a little bit more life out of your graphics card, spending a little bit more for like the 5500 or 5500 XT will give you a little bit more life and um, well, driver support. But all in all, it's a nice looking card and uh, it'll still play your favorite eSports titles, no problem. So this thing does require a eight pin power. So we do have that nice and uh, readily available. So the first thing we need to do is remove this PCI cover right here by removing this coarse threaded screw. So we'll get our screwdriver. And be careful not to knock over your studio lighting. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take that off, push it to the side. And then we're going to go ahead and install our graphics card. We need to make sure where this is gonna line up. And this is a tight fit, ladies and gentlemen. Talk about fitment. So uh, we're gonna line up and we're going to get rid of these right here. So these two will break off PCI covers. Couldn't afford the removable ones. Mm -mm. Heck no. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boom. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boom. Now get those out of the way. Uh, go ahead and slot it back in very carefully. They laid off the paint, guys. They laid off the paint, guys. Okay. Line it up. 
hold on to the back of your case. Oops, stop, stop wobbling. And push. Woo, just like that, your graphics card is installed. Now you're gonna take some power supply screws from the screw bag that you had originally, and you're gonna go ahead and screw in the graphics card. I will say, this is like the one area where companies seem to cheap out on their cases. The tooling. <laughs> get the screws in and everything. But these seem to actually be working all right. Case valid. Case of valid question mark. Now we're gonna take this cover, put it back on and take that same screw that you removed earlier and try to put it back on. Boom, there you go. You have that good to go. Joan Lee, Joan Lee, <laughs> Joan Lee. Now we're gonna take our eight pin for the GPU, which has very little slack actually. Urgh! Might be just enough. We're gonna wrap this around. Oh, you gave me a little bit more, thank you. Take this eight pin PCI, clip down and unload. <laughs> but there you go, the PCI power is plugged in. We will take a zip tie here in a minute and clean this up a little bit, but it is plugged in and I will say, looking pretty snazzy. Yeah, so at this point, uh, we're gonna show you guys how to do like some cable management, but this is a good time if you wanna test your build to make sure it actually works before you do all that work. It's ready to go, but we gotta make do with this. We have an ever so slight panel gap here that is all the room we have for cables. I'm excited. So yeah, that, that didn't seem like it was gonna work, but look, it's actually on. God. <laughs> oh my God, look at the side profile. God. It's like you would never know, but all right. You know, I said you should like, we're confident it'll work, but now let's actually see if it works. Yeah, that'd be important. So we're going to get the uh, the official turn on for the first time. Hey. Whoa, let, that was fast. That is just RGB. Like, vroom. So yeah, it's, it's like it's like RGB. It's I like guess. static, right? It's static, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah, um, there's the build. It's looking not too bad. I mean, two hundred seventy dollars. Really? Yeah. Like, would you get this or like an Optiplex upgrade? I don't know. I mean, it's looking pretty good. Um, so now that you guys have watched us build it, if you guys want to know how to install Windows, I'm gonna give you all a little hint. Go to the PC Bros YouTube channel. We have a bunch of guides on how to install Windows. This is our little PC Bros YouTube channel plug. That's how you install Windows drivers to get this thing up and running. But we're gonna jump straight into some gaming and see how it can perform. Now, before we get into the benchmarking section of today's video to test out this awesome budget gaming PC, we have to give another big shout out to AliExpress for sponsoring today's video. And also mention, not only can you get good deals on gaming PC hardware, you can buy stuff like gaming keyboards, like this 60% Mage Geek gaming keyboard with RGB lighting, a very clean white design, and really awesome red linear switches for really good prices. And you can also get stuff like Razer gaming mice and also accessories like this external display that shows your temperatures and other cool stuff about your PC. And all this stuff can be had on AliExpress. So definitely check those links down below to shop for accessories for the PC you're gonna be building in today's video. And let's get right into the benchmarking and see how this PC performs. All right, gamers, we are kicking things off with Fortnite right now on DX12, a limited frame rate. And we're running performance settings, which is basically far view distance, low textures, everything else is low across the board. We're trying DX12 mainly because AMD GPUs tend to like DX12 more than they do um, DX11 or performance mode. So we're gonna give it a shot here and see how it holds up. But I imagine we'll get 60 plus FPS. The frame rate is on unlimited, which I'll probably end up capping to like 100 or 120 because we might get a little bit of stutter here and there. Um, but again, sub $300. If we can get a 60 plus, maybe 90 plus FPS experience in Fortnite, I'll be very happy with it. And so far it's running a lot sooner than I expected. Honestly, on performance mode, we'd be pushing that CPU a little too hard and it probably wouldn't run nearly as smooth. Oh! Hey! Below me. I don't understand sounds in this game. Okay, you're done. Hey. All right, guys, but as you can see, Fortnite, more than playable. 100 plus FPS, very smooth. I really recommend running GX12 if you do get this configuration. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, we are playing Apex Legends. We're gonna be doing some team deathmatch here, and um, we're on a mixture of low, medium. 
1080p. We're not using any upscaling or downscaling or anything. Kind of what you expect from a $270 computer. I mean, 60 FPS, medium, low settings, not too shabby. Yay! Yeah, One of those bullets buddy. hit. Ah! Oh. Yeah, buddy! Why is there two Pathfinders? Oh my god, they're be I, they're twins. Bob. Oh god, dude. I'm oh my god. I feel like I'm gonna hit my shots today. <laughs> yeah, 999, you're eliminated. A ring of fire. Johnny Cash. Oh, oh that is just my grenade. The nade. Let's go. We won't let that give oh. you bully us today. <laughs> That'd be <a> sick fight. <laughs> oh! That, that, that was getting weird. Where'd he go? <laughs> oh. Hey! Oh, double he, kill! He, we did it. On the AliExpress oh. PC build and oh. hey. Kill cam? Oh, there's kill cam now? <laughs> Let's go. All right, guys, well, we were able to do it. We built a PC for a very cheap price. We showed you how to do it, and then we showed you all just how well it actually games. And of course, there are some limitations with a $270 PC. One, it's not perfect. I mean, there are compromises we had to make to get this PC to be $270. And for some people, this might not be the best option for you, but if you're looking to get into PC gaming, you don't do an Optiplex or Office PC upgrade, this is definitely a good option. And some of the limitations are in higher end games, like Cyberpunk. We had to run 1080p low and only got an average of 47 FPS with no FSR on, but our 3D Mark Times Five score is actually pretty solid with a score of 4,166, which is a six cent per point average. So in terms of price performance, very solid. But yes, again, this is not ideally for everyone. This is definitely a very budget PC, but if you're wanting to build a PC on a budget, this would be a good option for you. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. So once again, guys, we stream over at Twitch. We also stream on Toasty Clips for the multi-stream purposes. And on top of that, we have many other social media platforms as well, such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so much more. So if you can't get enough of the Toasty Bros here on YouTube, you will find another social media platform for you in the description down below. See you guys later. Goodbye. Bye.